Alright guys, I'm doing a little something different for a top 20 today. I'm doing a top 20 French niche houses video for you today. 20 of my favorite French niche houses ranked from number 20 to number 1 plus one bonus house after the outro or outro. But if you want to find out what my 20 favorite niche houses are all the way from France, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Yeah, today I'm talking about French niche houses. No designers here, not whatsoever, even if there's that technicality of is it a designer or is it a, a niche house, not here. All of these are niche houses. And I kind of also went through my favorites and made sure these have been around for some time. Definitely at least 10 years or longer uh, is the uh, requirement. And I think some of the... Uh, some of them are like at least 15 years old uh, and then of course much older than that. So I wanted to make sure that they've been around for a while, people have heard about them, things like that. I don't have any houses listed here that are like five years old, six years old, two years old, one year old, you know, at least over 10 years old and I think some of them are around 15 years old. Either way, I'm gonna let you know what they are, plus I'm gonna feature three fragrances from each house. I'm not gonna get really extensive about each of the fragrances, but just a little brief something about each fragrance. So 20 total plus one bonus house uh, and the fragrances from these houses. But before I get to them, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed to the channel, please do click the subscribe button below and please click the bell icon so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So what is your favorite French niche house? And do you have a top five favorite French niche houses? Put a comment down so I can find out. We're going to start out with the first one. We're going to the house of Molinard. They've been around since the 1800s. They're based out of grass uh, in the, the south of France. I've been to their perfumery a couple times. And their fragrances are really, really great. Uh, I'm going to get, highlight a couple of fragrances here. Fig is uh, definitely one of their more popular ones in the collection. They're known for a classic fragrance called Habanita, this one right here. And then, of course, they have another collection, kind of like an upper scale luxury collection. And one of the fragrances from that collection is Secret Sucre. If you like sugary fragrances, this is yummy. It's kind of caramelized sugar. This one is a powdery classic fragrance, of course. And then this collection gets a lot of love and hype uh, with fig, lavande. They also have like patchouli, vanilla, and things like that. So a great house to start off this top 20 list. At number 19, this is uh, a house that started, I think, uh, definitely in the... They're definitely at least 10 years old. They started around the 2000s, towards the end of the 2000s. And I'm talking about Atelier Cologne. It is a French house, but I think they have roots in Brooklyn, uh, in New York. But I'm including them here because obviously everything is very French here. It's Atelier Cologne. And a few fragrances I should highlight is Bergamot Soleil. And Bergamot Soleil is a great uh, Bergamot focused fragrance. Of course, they're really known for Orange Sanguine, a very, uh, you know, blood orangey kind of a perfect uh, fresh fragrance to wear. Very, very smooth and lightly buttery with the experience here. I get a kind of buttery orange experience. Not like butter fat, but it's just like very creamy oranges for some reason. Um, they're all very, very fresh fragrances, but they do have multiple other collections that might have more intense uh, offerings. And then finally, Clement, uh, Clementine California is a great, great fresh uh, Clementine fragrance. So Atelier Cologne, if you don't know this house and you love fresh fragrances, you're probably definitely missing out because they're really, really known for really excellent fresh fragrances. So, the next fragrance house I'm going to talk to you about is uh, Pierre Guillaume, which uh, has been around since the 2000s, and I think this is a house I first discovered, not I think, I know I first discovered, around 2013 in the south of France in a perfume shop there who, co who was carrying this collection. And uh, the, some of the fragrances I smelled there uh, were Cose, which I do have here. It is a dark chocolate cacao combo with uh, cannabis and uh, patchouli. Great, great fragrance. I bought that right off the bat there. But there they had another fragrance called Musk Maori. 
kind of a chocolatey musk, which I don't own, I should get. But a more, more recent release here, Animal Mundane, a great tobacco fragrance, very musky and very sexy. And something in a white bottle here, Sensuality, kind of a uh, coconutty, beachy, uh, white floral fragrance. So, great house. They have an actual store, physical store in Paris, which I've been to. You can go check them out if you ever make it to Paris. But a great niche house with excellent fragrances. And sadly, that house doesn't get a lot of press, unfortunately. So, um, uh, they have really, really great fragrances. And Pierre Guillaume is a great perfumer. Now, it used to be called Parfum Parfumerie Generale, and they had multiple collections. Now, it's all under one name, Pierre Guillaume. So, at number 17, we're going to a house called... Uh, let me sh let me get the fragrances. Histoires de Parfums. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this house, but they've been around for quite some time. They have some great fragrances. These are definitely houses from the 2000s, niche houses. Uh, and uh, one of my favorite fragrances is 1740, uh, Marquis de Sade. It's the uh, uh, patchouli leather kind of Artemisia boozy uh, fragrance that's really, really delicious. Another one is the this is not a blue bottle collection and the latest one 1.6 is really a great combination of uh, neroli orange blossom with jasmine and uh, I believe it's yuzu and grapefruit very fresh to wear and I'll, 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 although the, I think the jasmine in here is also giving me a little bit of a coconutty kind of a, a creaminess in there uh, and then finally this is rare veni this one edition rare veni and this one is a gourmand with lots of uh, cardamom Lots of cardamom. If you like cardamom gourmands, this is definitely one for you to try. And again, this, this house does have a store in um, the Marais part of uh, Paris. You can also visit. It's um, kind of out of the way. I, I went the, the last time I was there and I did, saw, I did see that they had a great store. And they have fragrances there that are not available elsewhere too. So it's a, a great thing to do if you're ever traveling to France, Paris, of course, visit some of these stores. I find visiting these single standalone perfume houses such a great treat uh, when you're in France. There's so many of them and you can just, you can waste away, not waste away, but you can like spend days and days and days going to these different uh, houses to uh, discover fragrances from, you know, all these niche houses. So that's Histoires of Parfums at number 17. At number 16, going to the house of Memo Paris. They've been around for quite some time, at least a good 10 years. Uh, but they have some great fragrances. I think they're known for this one, African Leather. A lot of people love this one. And they have a great collection of leather fragrances. And I think African Leather is definitely one of my favorites from the collection. I do enjoy its spiciness uh, and slight leathery animalic touch. But I really do love Sintra as well. Sintra is a great fragrance, kind of reminiscent of uh, Love Don't Be Shy from uh, Killian. And then of course Winter Palace is a great cozy tea fragrance. They do crank out a lot of fragrances here at this house, a lot. They're classy uh, and uh, really excellent smelling fragrances. A little on the pricier side though. And once again, they have a they have a house as well. Like they have a store, it's on the Rue Cambon, right across the street from the uh, original Chanel boutique in Paris. I highly recommend visiting that store as well. Definitely worth it. So that's number 16, my 16th favorite uh, a French niche house and at number 15 going to Juliet has a gun another fairly modern uh, you know uh, niche fragrance house Juliet has a gun is uh, become one of my favorite houses because of some of their quirky offerings that they have one of my favorites from this house is vanilla vibes I love vanilla vibes and I love the salty vanillic beachy qualities of this fragrance but the latest fragrance pear ink is fun it's a fruity musky concoction which is great but the one i really really love is their molecular it's like eccentric like fragrances not a perfume and not a perfume super dose here uh, a lot of people say they can't smell lot not a perfume uh, if you put your nose on not a perfume super dose you're definitely going to smell it there's very much a uh, fragrance there but what i like about these fragrances is they're very very minimalistic you can use them to layer with other fragrances this one definitely has a smell if you haven't been able to smell not a perfume try the super dose version uh, it definitely has a smell but they have a bunch of different collections of fragrances uh, but these are some of my favorites uh, as of late from Juliet has a gun so Juliet has a gun is at number 15 so at number 
14. This might shock some people, but this house has slipped way down. Uh, it's by Killian. Um, and, you know, I, I was a big fan of this house. They discontinued the ouds, first of all. The ouds were amazing. The rose oud, I got so many, so many compliments when I wore that rose oud. It's gone. Why? Does it not sell? I don't know, but I loved Rose Oud, and I love the compliments I got with that one. Um, I love the Incense Oud, I love the Amber Oud. The only one they kept from that collection is Musk Oud, but they do have some other great fragrances, but sadly this, this house is slipping. One of my favorites is Back to Black. I love it. It's the honey, uh, a beautiful honeyed fragrance with the tobacco touches under there. Very, very delicious. Uh, one of their more recent ones is Rolling in Love, this one right here lost train of my my train of thought there rolling in love is a great uh tonka beanie kind of uh, white floral fragrance uh that's uh, really really delicious to wear I, I like that one a lot and then of course black phantom that one's definitely a solid release uh i love its uh gourmand boozy uh qualities of that one caramel milk um coffee and uh, of course, uh, what else is there? Um, there's a, a lot of yummy, delicious notes in this one. I'm, I'm drawing a blank, but the coffee and the milk and the caramel uh, definitely stand out. And I think there's a little bit of chocolate in here as well. So sadly, number 14 by Killian. Um, they've, you know, they've gone down because you know they've discontinued some of the better fragrances like the Oud's collection. Incense Oud was amazing as well. Rose Oud. Pure Oud I wasn't the biggest fan of. But uh, Amber Oud, Rose Oud, Incense Oud were just to die for. Uh, and, uh, you know, Love Don't Be Shy, I'm not featuring here. And it's, an, it's another great fragrance for me from this house. But it has gotten reformulated. It really has. It's no longer what it used to be. Either way, number 14 by Killian. And if you're in Paris, you can visit the boutique there as well. It's like two stores or one store down from the Memo Paris store uh, uh, on the Rue Cambon there. So definitely worth visiting. Now at number 13, I'm going to a house called Maitre Parfumer at Gantier. So uh, the person that started this brand had started L'Artisan Parfumer, which is also on my list here. It comes up in a little bit. But Maitre Parfumer at Gantier is known for the Ombre Perso and a lot of other intense fragrances. And this is uh, actually, no, this one, this one, here is Ombre Perso. The bottles, you can't really tell what they are unless they have like a little dangly thing on it. Um, then you can kind of distinguish the bottles. But they're fairly similar bottles. I've got Ombre Perso here, and then I've got Santal Noble here. A great fragrance. Ombre Perso is probably what everybody knows of the, from this house. It's one of the best ambers ever. Really spicy, aromatic resinous and then Santal Noble is it also a very very delicious sandalwood fragrance uh, a little musky animalic and then one of their more later ones is this patchouli 1969 it's a great uh, patchouli uh, that um, it's you know great to wear uh, very aromatic and spicy and very very earthy touches and some sparkliness as well but like I said the bottles are not that distinguishable so if there is something like this on it you'll know what bottle it is otherwise you'll have to look at the bottom but either way Maitre Parfumer Gantier is number 13 from this house and moving on to another uh, niche house I think launched in the 80s um, Maybe seven, no, 1980s, I think. Maitre Parfumer at Gantier was launched in the se uh, late 70s, early 80s, I believe. But this next house is Parfums de Nicolai from the uh, 80s, and it's a great, great niche house. And if you're in Paris, you're gonna find a bunch of different stores. They have like six or seven stores all over the city, and I've been to three of them uh, there, and it's, it's amazing. Uh, a great, great collection of fragrances. A little more classic stylings, but really amazing perfumery. I think if you like really love perfumery i think this is a great house for you to try and some of the fragrances that i like from this house of course is patchouli intense this one right here i love this one it's a great green aromatic patchouli queer cuba is also a great uh, tobacco fragrance uh wonderfully spicy and then they have some fresh ones like neroli intense uh, is uh, definitely really, really beautiful, but intense Neroli fragrance. Uh, again, a great house here, a great niche house that I really, really love. And their fragrances are a little on the classic side, which is not a bad thing, because I, I remember perfumes from the 70s when I first smelled it from my dad and my mom. And even though these are not going to remind me of those fragrances, but when you put your nose on them, you're going to get that they are kind of a, 
slightly classic leaning, which is an awesome thing. So number 12, Parfums de Nicolai. Uh, the next one I'm going to feature as number 11 favorite niche house is uh, Etat Libre de Orange uh, with some amazing fragrances. They're a quirkier uh, house that has, uh, you know, quirky names for fragrances. And I first discovered them in Paris in their boutique, uh, which actually is close to a Parfums de Nicolai boutique as well. It's like steps away from one another. Uh, and uh, the cool thing about the, the Etat Libre de Orange boutique is it's like right on a corner. Uh, like you can see it from multiple different corners. It's right there. And once you walk in, it's like a perfume porn shop in there. It's a very interestingly decorated. It's definitely worth visiting. But I love the quirky side of this fragrance house. They have some great uh, original fragrances. Fat Electrician, I love the story behind it. And I love the fragrance. It's a gourmand leaning vetiver fragrance that makes it easy to make it unisex rather than go full on masculine because vetiver can go very masculine. So if you are a female and you don't like the way vetiver smells, you should try Fat Electrician. The weird name, but a great story. You should ask them the story about Fat Electrician if you ever make it to their store. But Tom of Finland, a great leather almost gourmand, buttery, suede-like leather, very, very delicious fragrance. And this fragrance starts out clear and changes color over time. It's all orange now. I don't know if you guys ever noticed that, but that's what happened with my Tom of Finland. And then finally, something more animalic and very masculine and leathery, Rian Intense Incense is a great, great fragrance uh, if you like a very, very manly, uh, animalic kind of uh, smelling. Uh, this one is very leathery and also very incense-y, but lots of aldehydes as well which gives it kind of a airy quality even though it's got those really rugged rough uh, manly uh, notes in there so Etat Libre Orange is my number 11th favorite house my number 10th favorite house is Mansara and I'm almost thinking I thought this was more of a Middle Eastern house Mont Mansara and Montal but it does say France, they're based out of France, so I'm featuring it here. And Mansara is here, but Montal is a lot higher up. And Mansara has been around for a while, um, I think a good 10 years. They've got some great fragrances. Uh, Cedra Boise is probably the, one of the more popular fresh ones. Hindu Kush for me just does it for me. I love to wear it and um, it uh, leaves the most sexiest trail. It's, it's amazing that way. And one of my latest loves is Holidays. Such a great fragrance. If you love coconuts, uh, this is a great kind of beachy, creamy, vanilla, coconutty fragrance. Salty as well because you can smell like the ocean marine in there and uh, I think uh, it smells fantastic and I love coconut and fragrances recently. So this is a great scent from uh, Mansara Holidays but Mansara is at number 10 favorite house from France, uh, favorite niche house from France, of course. So we're moving on to number nine favorite Fr uh, French niche house, and it's Serge Lutens. Uh, I think uh, this is one of the first niche houses that I discovered earlier, earlier on. Around 2010 is when I discovered this house. And they have some excellent releases, although the brand's gone through so many different changes, reformulations, fragrances moved from one bottle design to another. It gets a little confusing, but uh, still, they have some excellent fragrances. I think probably everybody knows Chergui as one of the more popular fragrances from this house. It's definitely uh, a great scent. Uh, and also very unisex for a tobacco fragrance. But of course, Ombre Sultan is one of my favorite favorites from this house. Great, great amber. Uh, beautiful spicy amber. Uh, a wonderful fragrance. Uh, and then uh, this is the most complicated name. It's Fila Angi. I think uh, girl with uh, pins or needles or whatever is what it translates to. It's a pine with dried fruits and uh, resins kind of a mix. Really, really delicious in this bottle here. It used to be in a different bottle style. But a great niche house. And once again, they have an amazing store in Paris in the Palais Royale. I highly recommend you visit that store, although they opened up a second store uh, off the Rue Saint Honoré. Uh, but uh, if you ever make it, you gotta visit that uh, house because they have a great, great store. In fact, a lot of these brands that I'm speaking about today have stores in Paris. You can go to each one and spend like days and days going to all these different um, fragrance houses. So at number nine, it's Serge Lutens. And then at number 
Eight, it's uh, going to the house of probably one of the very first niche houses. It's uh, L'Artisan Parfumer, and uh, I've got three fragrances that I wanted to feature. But as I was saying earlier, uh, the the person that started L'Artisan Parfumer sold that company and then started Maitre Parfum at Gantier, who also has a great house, I mean a store in Paris. Uh, but the, if you're in Paris, you're going to find a lot of different uh, L'Artisan Parfumer boutiques. There's probably like five or six of them there. But some of the fragrances that I really love from this one is Un Air de Britannia, this one right here. A great aquatic uh, citrus uh, aromatic fragrance, one of my favorite aquatic fragrances. Of course, T for Two is an amazing, amazing fragrance. Love T for Two, it's spiciness. Uh, uh, and it's a uh, cozy qualities with the T note in there and then of course probably one of the ones they're known for is Murat Musk a blackberry a green blackberry musky fragrance so it's fruity and very very delicious I think uh, a great fragrance uh, to um, discover from this house if you don't know this house so those are three fragrances you should check into from that particular house it's a historic house from uh, France definitely one of my favorite niche houses so next up going to a more recent one, but definitely from the 2000s. This is uh, Le Labo, and I'm going to feature three different fragrances, but they have so many different ones from this house. In fact, I'm probably going to do a video of all their fragrances very, very soon because I've got probably about 15 of their fragrances. Either way, another 13 is probably one of the uh, more popular ones. Very, very sexy, uh, utilizing ambroxan, but it's it, it smells amazing on people. Whatever notes they have in here, really, you know, uh, kind of projecting off of people, it's really, really sexy. I love the way that smells. Even when I smell myself wearing it, I, I think it's like really, really sexy. Tain Noir is a great fragrance, one of the more underrated ones. I love that one. Uh, very, very beautiful. And then one of the more recent ones is Bay 19. Uh, it's more petrichor, earthy, green patchouli. I love that one. But they have Rose 31. I think their more popular one is Santal 33. And of course, if you're in Paris, you're going to find a lot of different stores uh, for Le Labo. And then we have a store here in San Francisco. So they're, they're spread out all around the world with um, their kind of laboratory-themed uh, uh, fragrance houses. So at number seven, it's Le Labo and uh, number seven favorite uh, niche perfume house from France. And at number six, it's Montal. I've got three fragrances here to tell you about. And Montal has become one of my favorite fragrance houses because it's just a very intense fragrance experience. Really long lasting uh, Middle Eastern style fragrances. Lots of roses and ouds and things like that. Musks. I definitely love them. And my favorite fragrance of course from this house is Intense Cafe. I just love the way this smells. The rose, amber, milk, coffee kind of combo. Although it's not that coffee-like. I recently did a video comparing this to some other fragrances that are similar. You can go catch that, but Intense Cafe is great. But one of their other more popular fragrances is Black Oud, and Black Oud is um, definitely that great uh, combo of Oud and uh, Rose, but they've thrown in some patchouli here as well. And then, of course, I, I like this one, which is um, Patchouli Vetiver. I really, really love that combination of that very green qualities in there, little powdery, but love the combination of the vetiver patchouli. But they have so many fragrances in their collection. I think you can, um, uh, you know, spend a lot of time if you found a store that sold everything. You'd be smelling those fragrances and then probably ruining your sense of smell for a while. So Montal uh, is my sixth favorite fragrance house. My uh, fifth favorite fragrance house happens to be Parfums de Marly. I really like their fragrances, and my favorite fragrance from this house is Herod. I absolutely love the Herod uh, fragrance. I love the tobacco, vanilla, osmanthus combination here. Uh, I just think it smells fantastic. A great fragrance to this day. When I first blind bought this one in 2014, I still love it. Uh, Leighton is another great one from this house. Um, I really love the spiciness with this one and light fruity touches. And then of course, um, this Greenlee is also a great freshie that's uh, more recently a fruity freshie with apple kind of notes. I think it smells fantastic. So Parfums de Marley has a, a great house at number five. They do have a store as well, which is also down by, by Killian and Memo Paris on that same street. I've been to it a couple times, definitely worth a visit. That little neighborhood for perfumes is perfume heaven because around the corner of Javoy Boutique is there as well. And at number four, I'm going to a house called, where are they? Where are those fragrances? I can't find them. Here they are. So at number four, I'm going to the house of Diptyque. Diptyque's been around forever. I love it. 
Speaking of Eau de Mente, this is a fougere I recently featured in my fougere fragrances video. This is a great, uh, you know, classic leaning uh, minty uh, fragrance that's very fougere-like. Tempo is a great patchouli, very green patchouli. I absolutely love Tempo. It's, it's very sexy. And then, of course, my favorite of the house is Benjoin Bohème. I'm, I'm really low on it. But a great benzoin-focused fragrance. Very warm, resinous, and ambery. It's a great, great fragrance. I love it. Diptyque is one of my favorite houses, not only for fragrances, but also for candles. So at number four, it's Diptyque. Uh, at number three, I was just mentioning this uh, store, Javoy. Uh, my favorite, my third favorite house is Javoy. I absolutely love the fragrances in this house. Incident Diplomatique, a great sexy vetiver patchouli combo. Psychedelic, one of the most amazing patchouli fragrances. And of course, Remember Me also is a great milky lactonic tea fragrance. Really love it. So if you're in that neighborhood of Parfums Marley Memo Paris by Killian, you can just walk around the corner and go to Javoy and you'll find all of the Javoy fragrances plus a lot of different niche brands. It's probably the premier niche perfume store in the world because they got so much stuff there. You'll be spending days there like smelling stuff. You'd get tired, go eat something, come back and smell more day after day after day and you'd still not be finished with all the fragrances they have. But I love Javoy as a fragrance house. Their fragrances are amazing. I just love them. And they're at number three. And so at number two, it's Frederick Mall. So Frederick Mall's Lise Mediterranean is a great newer discovery for me for an aquatic uh, sea fresh uh, lily floral fragrance. I love it. But my favorite from the house, uh, and it's a tie, it's kind of really neck and neck. Musk Ravageur and Portrait of a Lady are two of my favorites from this house. Really love them. The Musk Ravageur for the musky gourmand touches. Portrait of a Lady for the rose and spicy patchouli incense fruity uh, combination. Such great fragrances from this house. I know a lot of people are complaining because of the Estee Lauder thing. I still think they're very very unique smells. Yes the performance might not be as good but I can't help that unfortunately. It's a great great house with great fragrances. So Frederick Mall at number two. And my number one favorite favorite house is Maison Francis Kirchen. Baccarat Rouge 540 XA is such a great fragrance. Not a love at first sniff. I hated it in fact. Now I can't, you know, I can't get enough of the smell. It smells fantastic. I just love the way it smells and leaves the most amazing sexiest trail. Grand Soir is another one. It's a great, great amber. Very, very unisex, gorgeous amber. Very warm and uh, balsamic resinous and sweet resins and vanilla combo. And of course, one freshie, Aqua Universalis Forte. So great, uh, musky, clean, laundry-like um, smell. Um, can't get enough of it. But the, the fragrance house does have great, great fragrances, uh, Maison Francis Kirchen, but sadly they're discontinuing some of the better ones. I hope they don't do that more of it, but they are, and they're not launching some really excellent fragrances to replace them with. So currently they are number one, but maybe after a year or two I do this video, they might not stay at number one. Either way, my number one favorite French niche house is Maison Francis Kirchen. And thank you so much for watching this video. Stick around till the outro, after the outro for my bonus fragrance house. But uh, let me know what your thoughts are on these fragrances and these houses. Would you rank this list? How would you rank it? Give me a top 10, give me a top five if you can't do a top 10. But let me know how you would rank these uh, fragrance uh, houses. And also, did I miss anything? I know I don't have every single fragrance from every single house. I probably did miss a house or two. Let me know what I missed or what you f are uh, a fan of as a house. No designers, just niche. And if I haven't checked them out, I'd like to check them out as well. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. All right, the bonus house I'm going to feature is Anique Goutal, Goutal Paris. The reason I'm featuring it as a bonus is because I haven't really checked out their brand, rebranded fragrances as a brand. They're, they've been Anique Goutal for the longest time, and it, Anique Goutal is one of my very, very earliest niche houses that I started wearing. They used to sell fragrances here. I love the way they smelled. And uh, Oda Adrienne's probably my, one of my all-time favorite fragrances, but I haven't checked out what the fragrances have become under the new name Goutal Paris. So sadly, that's why I'm featuring them as a bonus. Uh, I'd still like to kind of, you know, dial, 
dive into the house, the new house, but I think as a classic house, they're uh, fairly amazing. Eau de Adrienne is one of the best tart, lemony, citrus fragrances ever with some cypress and woods thrown in. A great, great fragrance. If you want it very, very uh, tart, that's definitely one for you to try. Ninfio Mio, a great fig fragrance. Wonderful fig fragrance, a little sandy, a little herbal, a little green aromatic. And then Nuit Etoile, a great, great fragrance with mint, dried mint, and pine. Great scents, but I have not checked these fragrances out in their new, I guess they would be newly reformulated in new bottles. If you are an expert at the new uh, versions of these fragrances, let me know, put a comment down so I can find out. But I definitely cannot not mention this house because, as I said, it was one of my very first niche houses from France that I loved wearing their fragrances of. And sadly, I'm making it as a bonus because I just don't know what they are like currently in their new bottles and new formulations. But like I said, if you know how they smell, do they smell similar and things like that, let me know, put a comment down. But Anique Goutal or Goutal Paris is definitely worthy to be mentioned in this list of top 20 uh, French niche houses that I love. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in and sticking around till the end uh, after the outro. Uh, I'll be back with more videos very soon. Goodbye.